Hello, everyone. You are listening to The Red Shift, your connection to your piece of the sky. I'm your host, Emma Miller. Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, shifters. How are you all doing today? Hi, ZFT Karen. Hello, hi, Rerouted. How's it going? How are you all doing? Bright eyes. Hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? I know it's morning for me, but I'm sure that around the world it is different times for everyone else. Glad to hear you guys are doing well. Hi, Shiny. How's it going? Hello, hello. Hi, April. Hi, Stealth. Hi, Sheraton. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Ella. Hi, Maximo. Oh my gosh, so many highs today. Hi, Scaro. I do remember you, April. I do, I do. I'm I'm still trying to figure out when we can plan that time to hang out. Hi, Rock Attack. Hi, Janutes. Hi. Welcome everyone in. What a week it's been, my friends. What a week it has been. Uh, honestly, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. Uh, I <laughs> I guess the only logical place to start, and I'm seeing some names that I'm about to shout out, so I just want to get right into this. Um, I, I just want to say personally, a huge thank you to any of the shifters who helped out last week. Um, if you weren't here last week at the end of the show, we got a message from a regular shifter and actually astronaut on Mars, uh, Alex. Uh, and Alex uh, let us know that something quite terrible had happened to one of uh, the engineers on the planet Ida. Um, so with the help of actually some of our shifters uh, and of course the team on Mars, they were able to recover her. Uh, and it's been a bit crazy over the last couple of days. And we'll get more into that as we go. But I do want to specifically shout out S7 Kairos, Brick Bond, CHRNV, John John, and Shiny Force. You all were absolutely imperative uh, and needed in order to uh, make sure that Ida was recovered safely. So thank you so, so much for being here and for helping out, helping to translate uh, those messages that Ida sent. I, I shudder to think what would have happened had you all not been here. So thank you so much for your help. Uh, thank you so much for uh, making it possible for us to recover uh, one of our greatest astronauts. So thank you. Thank you, S7. You really were uh, pivotal in making sure that that was all um, that worked out the way that it did. So thank you so much. Uh, it could have been really bad. Uh, I hope that that doesn't happen again, but it is very um, comforting to know that we can, you know, do amazing things when we work together, right? So that was fantastic. Uh, that being said, I don't think that Ida is entirely out of the woods yet. Uh, and like I said, we'll get to that uh, in a little bit with the, um, the message that was sent uh, this week from our astronauts. Um, so yeah, with that, Thank you again, uh, and let's get into our ISA announcements. Um, so in terms of an ISA announcements this week, um, other than, of course, you know, Ida being okay, uh, we just want to highlight uh, that the ISA did just share some special ways for you to get a promotion for your second shift uh, job on Mars. Um, that information was shared yesterday, so make sure that you uh, check out uh, that information. It's a, a good way to get a little bit more involved. Um, which I know I really have loved getting more involved with the ISA, so uh, hopefully you all will too. With that, that pretty much wraps up our announcements. So we're gonna hop on over to uh, our letter for the week. Very, very exciting. So this week, the note is from Tatiana uh, Zelenko, who is one of the doctors on Mars. Um, Tatiana is one of the two doctors, but uh, she kind of seems like she's taking the like the lead role in terms of uh, helping helping Ida, which is fantastic. Um, I'll be honest, this isn't really much of a letter. Uh, you'll kind of see what I mean. Uh, I'll let Tatiana explain what it is herself. And then after the note that she shared, we actually have a really fun activity uh, that I was told that Tatiana and John Alves worked on together. Uh, so I'll explain how that works a little bit later. Uh, I think you guys will have a lot of fun with it. They're two peas in a pod, honestly. Uh, it'll be it'll be a good time. So for now, uh, we're going to hop into the note from Tatiana uh, and let's get right on into it. Keep in mind, again, these are all of her words, not mine. Nitty says, my turn to write. I say, no. 
kind of busy with engineer who came down with a bad case of death. Not the worst case I ever saw, but not great. Mitty says maybe talk about that. So okay, I can dictate a couple of notes on the computer. You like, great. You don't like, my heart is broken, but somehow I go on. Day one, Aurora got Ida back to base. When we got her to the medical base and unzipped, she slid out of her spacesuit like a dead fish. Cold, gray, no pulse. Fancy ISA defibrillator talks when you pick it up, tells you how to use it. If we get Ida back, I am thinking, first job for an engineer is shut that thing up. It's like fire alarm, but thinks it has a medical degree. Bertram makes sure Ida's tongue isn't between her teeth, then I put the paddles on her chest and zap. Ida's heart starts up, kind of, like a rough idol. Stalls out. Zap again. Basically is clown show now. Aurora's holding Ida's shoulders down, Bertram fishing around in her mouth with his huge hand, and me, I got that big needle used to scare the crap out of you when you were a kid, and I'm loading it up with enough epinephrine to give a pig a heart attack. Fun times. John Alves probably got the tape off the security camera, sell to TV for bags of Bitcoin. Finally, Ida's heart truly catches. It's running like a Ferrari. She opens her eyes and says swear word in Italian and punches Bertram in the face and passes out. Was beautiful. Beautifulest damn thing we ever saw. Put blankets on her chest, leave arms and legs to warm up slowly on their own, got an IV in her, and threw in the whole grocery store. Fluid to rehydrate, ibuprofen and steroids to bring down swelling. I could hear a rasp when she breathed, consistent with dust inhalation. You can imagine it. The rover smashed, air leaking out, dust leaking in, Ida swearing and grabbing for her helmet. I topped her up with some potassium iodide too, for the perchlorates. Hypothermic patient with a screwed up thyroid, that's not so good. Was going to shave off her hair to get rid of dust, but Aurora said she wouldn't like it. Volunteered to wash it by hand, wearing gloves and a respirator. Antibiotics, I give her extra, to keep any internal injuries from getting infected. Then a muscle relaxant and a sedative so she can sleep. I get an IV in your arm. Buddy, you get all the shit. Then I put three stitches in Bertram's lip. I tell you, that girl can punch. So that's day one. Day two. That first night, Ida's in and out of coma. Heart's ticking. Brain, maybe not so much. Day two afternoon. Sleeping Beauty opens her eyes. Truth, Glamour Girl looks like crap. Her face is black and blue with bruises. She's got three crap, cracked ribs. Her pupils aren't quite the same size. She tries to talk. It's hard. Like she's been to the dentist and her mouth is frozen. She says she's dizzy and her head hurts and she feels like someone took a jackhammer to her, test, or to her chest. So now we're doing tests. Blood pressure, not terrible. Aspiration, not great. That's the dust in her lungs. But steroids should help. Grip strength, reflexes, eye tracking, audio. Ida guts it out. Okay, good, I tell her. Hard part over. Just brain function left. Which number comes next in series? Remember these seven words in order. That kind of thing. We get in like five minutes. Suddenly, she says she's too tired. Her head hurts. She has to sleep. Rolls over to face the wall. Two hours later, she's still sleeping when Mitty comes by. Mitty is a good person, but she has a base to run, and she says the scary part right out loud. Do we need to send Ida back to Earth? I say mission for coming with her man on it. Now you want to send her back? Mitty says she's the mission commander, and I'm the surgeon. We got to do what's right for the mission. Think about it, she says. Mars is hard. If she can't function here anymore, we might need to replace her. Like one of Ida's pit stops, I say. Take off old tires, put on new. That's what Ida would do, Mitty says, which, okay, is true. There's a little ping from the EKG. I look over. Ida sure looks like she's sleeping, but her heart rate is up. Ida, I say? Hey, Mitty's here. No answer. I guess she was asleep. Day three. When I come in the next morning, Ida is already awake, waiting for me. She says she feels a million times better, Gives me big smile. Pretty gross, actually. Her whole face is so bruised, it looks like someone stepped on an eggplant. Ida pushes hard on the tests. Wanted to get out of bed, too. 
I told her it was too soon, but she said she could. So I figured, hell, it's only one third gravity. Go ahead. I watched her sit up and then slide slowly off the bed like a pile of laundry. Hilarious. Then I pick her up and put her back on the bed like a lumpy pillow. Nice try, racer girl. Maybe tomorrow. I made her talk about the accident. She didn't want to, but I said we had to check for amnesia, which was kind of a lie, but actually probably a good idea, so what the hell. She said the ground just broke, like going through rotten ice on a lake. The back end is heavy with battery, heat vent, whatever reason, the rover dropped ass end down. Crunch, boom. She talked about trying to breathe, her helmet rolling around the cabin, air wheezing through cracked windscreen, burn of dust in her lung, and steam rising all around the rover, water bubbling and steaming around her. Finally, helmet on, looking up at this ragged hole of sky above her in the dark. Then trying the doors, looking for tools, maybe 10 minutes before she even thought to check her O2. She stopped telling the story, got quiet, I asked if she remembered hacking the heat exchanger on her suit, but she didn't want to talk about that. Her engineer mind back with the rover. With the ground so soft, she said, how did they get me out? Broke your glass, I said. What goes around comes around. Day four. Today, Mitty said she would drop by after lunch. Oh boy. I'd have killed herself to get out of bed. Wanted to be standing when the mission commander came in. She's grabbing the back of my chair so hard you can see knuckles white under the skin. Mitty says, how are you doing? Ida says, great. Mitty says, when Ida is ready, she can maybe stay in the garage for a while and focus on repairs. Let Corey run around grabbing deposits the earthers find for us remote. Ida with a grinning, hell no, can't get back in the rover fast enough. You know me, Commander. Oh boy. Mitty left. I had to collapse onto her bed. I checked my supplies. We're getting low on a lot of things here. Painkiller, iodine, IV bags, antibiotics. Ida says you miss something. I'm like, what? You miss something. I should be getting better, and now there's this new thing. Okay, so I say, tell me the symptoms. She says, when I was talking to Mitty just now, there was this new thing. Dizzy, but sick to my stomach, too. I write down dizziness and nausea. Like being carsick? She says she's never been carsick. Oh, hey, great for you. What else then? In front of my eyes, she says, these floating patches of black, like oil on a road. I write down tunnel vision. And there's this knot in my throat, she says, like there's a rock stuck in it. I stop writing notes. What, she says, what's wrong with me? You know what this is? Sure, I say, that's fear. So that was day four. Day five. The ISA incident report on the rover crash is done. So no black mark for Ida. So that's a relief. In the Navy in the old days, if your ship sank, the captain had to go through a court martial. The ISA is not that bad. But if they decided Ida was at fault, it would have been a serious mark on her record. The incident report singled out some Earth Earth stakeholders who had a hand in saving Ida. She got me to help write them a note, but all the time I could tell she was still pissed at me over the fear thing. We had send on the message to Earth. Then she's back in my face. I'm not scared. Okay. Everything I've done, you think I'm chicken shit? You think scared girl races cars? Gets on a rocket? Yeah, yeah. So brave, I say. It's a problem. You know that, right? You know you're the only astronaut I don't trust? That stops her dead. Uh Uh-huh. John Alves, he's scared all the time. Every night, I go to bed knowing Alves is terrified, worrying about every little thing that might go wrong. It's fantastic. Makes me feel safe. Ida turns bitch face to 10. You don't like me because I'm brave? Not about like, about trust. And I'm not the only one. Bitch face goes to 11. It's impressive. This is just facts, I say. Who else, she says. And I poke her with my finger, which she does not like at all. And I say, you, for one, a person you know. It's like your brain sits on your body like a man riding a horse. Brain says what to do, where to go. But if man says, go run into that fire, the horse don't trust no more, okay? 
your body. It watched you drive it around Mars and get it stuck in a hole and then open your suit and then actually no shit on purpose freezed it to death. Your body doesn't trust you no more. So Mitty comes in and the horse hears you say, oh boy, can't go back on the rover fast enough. And the horse thinks, screw that. Hell no. Ida says, but I mean, how can I do the work if I'm scared all the time? Like the rest of us, I say. You're all finally, you are finally scared? Great. Fantastic. Now maybe I can trust you. Hello, hello, Ida. My name is Tatiana. We've been waiting for you. Welcome to Mars. Day six. Day six, big day. Ida's first trip out of the medical bay. Big party for her and everything like that. So that means she got to go out again. Got to put on a spacesuit again. When she picked it up, her hands started shaking, shaking. Took her three tries to put the spacesuit on. She said she felt sick to her stomach. And I said maybe she was going to faint and she told me to jump in a volcano and walked out the door and headed to the dining hall. Got inside and everybody cheered and Mitty made a speech and asked Ida to say a few words. And Ida opened her mouth and threw up. Like a sewer. I mean, everywhere. Did I tell you in one third G all these droplets just hang in the air? They get everywhere. So yes, Ida, lots of lerves. But turns out her gut also was crapped out, so to speak. Fever, nausea, abdominal cramps. By the time the diarrhea kicked in, I already had a bad feeling. So here's a few fun facts. There's all kinds of bacteria in your gut. Some good, some bad. One of the bad ones is called C. difficile. What they used to call it is clostridium. Maybe 70% of people walking around with C. difficile inside, but it doesn't matter because the good bacteria keep it down. Unless you get really weak. Like for instance, you kind of die. Or if you throw the gut off by filling it up with ibuprofen and then antibiotics, you know? They stop certain kinds of infections, but they can kill a lot of good bacteria too. Add in the fact that some bacteria seems to really spread in space, it's like they're supercharged. Another thing about C. difficile, it can be crazy contagious. Since the cleanup, two otherwise healthy people are now showing symptoms. So Mars, C. difficile, has mutated. Which is, like, fantastic. Thanks for that, Mars. Or maybe it's us. Maybe in the pressure or the cold or the radiation or something, we are vulnerable in some way. That's new. Yay for science. This morning, we were a colony on Mars, mining ore, analyzing data, making rocket fuel, reaching for the stars, the shining center of the greatest journey mankind has ever made. For the next week, though, we are going to be 12 miserable creatures fighting for space around two latrines. My friends, as of now, Mars base is really and truly in the shit. And that's the letter from Tatiana. Yikes. (laughs) I shouldn't be laughing. Um, I just think that Tatiana's way of presenting information is... uh, fascinating truly um cdf is is yeah it's it's not gonna be great i don't think um it doesn't sound great uh and the image of um you know vomit just getting everywhere in one third g is yeah i mean it doesn't sound great it doesn't sound great um yeah we're gonna (laughs) yikes (laughs) We need it to uh, heat up, I think. That's that's definitely what needs to happen. We'll have them get heated up for sure, for sure. Um, I, I don't know that that's going to happen. We'll check the weather report, which actually coincidentally is where we're going to be headed in just a moment here. But uh, before we head off to our sponsor message, I just want to remind you that we will be playing an adventure or an activity, not an adventure, uh, very shortly. Um, And like I mentioned, it was written by Tatiana and John Alves. Initially, actually, when I had asked for a a message, um, I was pretty much told that I was going to be writing something this week or making a a new activity. Um, 
And shortly after I received the initial message with Ida's letter, or not Ida's letter, with Tatiana's letter, uh, I got a message um, from the ISA passing along something that Tatiana and Alves had written. Um, I have read it. I have immersed myself in their game that they've created. Uh, it's It'll be a fun one. So we'll get right back to it in just a second. Uh, it does a very good job of uh, showing you, and please pardon my wording here, how shitty the planet can get sometimes. So um, when we get back from our sponsor and our weather break, we'll hop right into it. Uh, with that, let's head on over to our sponsor message. Are you looking for more in your work than what you are doing on Earth? Are you hoping to help better humanity for generations to come? Are you looking to make a mark on the service of Mars? Now you can do just that, all from the comfort of your home computer. With groundbreaking new technology created by some of the finest minds at the ISA, now you are able to work alongside the planet-bound astronauts at the Mars base to help retrieve vital resources to help the colony to learn, progress, and achieve greatness. This technological marvel allows you to access radar that centers around the position of both unmanned and manned vehicles on the planet. Using triangulation, you'll be able to use the radar imagery you receive to help navigate the vehicles to receive the payload. There has never been a better time to pick up a second shift on Mars. The astronauts on the planet will thank you. And so will the ISA. And now, the weather. Temperature at the Mars base uh, is ranging from lows at negative 100 degrees Celsius to highs of plus 5 degrees Celsius. Pressure is about 650 pascal. Uh, our current new beta version climate models predict variable winds with localized dust storms. Uh, winds from about 10 meters per second to 25 meters per second, varying from 150 to 200 degrees east of north. Atmospheric opacity is about 0 0.90. All right, this is it. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Our game this week is a simulation of a week in the life of the Mars base. Is it entirely accurate? No, I wouldn't necessarily say that. But Alves and Tatiana did find it incredibly amusing to show you how sideways things can go and how quickly it can happen. The way that this is going to work, and I am happy to answer any questions anyone has in the chat if there is any clarification needed, but I think you guys will pick it up pretty quickly. The way it will work is that each round is one day. We're going to start on round one, which is day one, round two, round three. In order for you to win, you have to get through day four. You have to survive through to day four. Each day, you will pick three of five presented tasks that you're able to do. They're the same five tasks every day. You get to prioritize which days you check certain things. Sometimes when you check something, it will give you a good result, and sometimes it will not be so good. In the case that you get a bad result, uh, you will go back one day, uh, and that will send you uh, back to retry the day previous. So if let's say you're on day three and you get a bad result, you'll go back to day two. If you're on day two and you get a bad result, you'll go back to day one. Like I said, your goal is to get through the end of day four without dying. Are you all ready? Are you all excited? I have two assistants who are going to help me out here. So we have we have Stephanie who's going to help. Uh, the way you're going to communicate which of the five things you want to prioritize is going to be to respond to uh, the comment that Stephanie is going to put in. She's going to put reactions. You're going to be able to choose one of those five. And then we're also going to have uh, MC is going to be sharing an image uh, that will be updated each day. What happens if you get a bad result on day one? Well, you can't get a bad result on day one. You can get a bad result on day two. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have you check. You can click three of the options uh, for day one. So you can pick if you want ABC, if you want whatever. But you can pick three each day. And we'll take the three highest ones. 
I will just let you know in between each round, I will have to do a quick little look through because uh, much like a game board, I have to just make sure that everything is written correctly so that I don't give you a wrong ending. All right, so, so far it looks like we're going to be checking our oxygen levels. It looks like we're going to be checking pressurization. Uh, and it looks like we're going to be checking, oh, let me clarify what planetary instruments are as well. Planetary instruments uh, are um, a seismograph, ground penetrating radar, radar on the surface of the planet as well, just so you know. And then satellites, of course, are looking out to space, just so you know. All right, so it looks like we just need one more to take the lead. It looks like D, planetary instruments, is going to be the, uh, the one that you guys are gonna have chosen. Perfect. All right, so you check the oxygen levels, and the oxygen levels are higher than you would like to have seen. So well done. Uh, you research and find out what the cause is, and you actually, uh, because of your quick thinking, uh, you are able to avoid a major oxygen malfunction, um, which is fantastic. So great job about checking your uh, checking that. That would have been that could have been potentially very bad if you had not checked the oxygen. Uh, then you check pressurization, um, and it looks like uh, the levels of the had pressure are normal. You notate the pressure value and go about your day. So good job. Um, notated, it, it looks it looks good. Uh, and then you check the planetary instruments. And when you check those planetary instruments uh, on the radar, you catch the approach of a, uh, a dust storm. It's beginning to form and you're able to prepare. Well done. You did it. So you got through day one. Very, very good job. All right, so now it's time for day two. What would you like to check on day two? All right, are we checking oxygen, soil pressurization, planetary instruments, or satellites? All right, it looks like today we have soil pulling ahead, we have satellites pulling ahead, and it looks like we have oxygen again. Looks like we wanna check oxygen again. All right, that looks good. Oxygen, soil, and satellites, okay. Okay, so for oxygen, uh, oxygen levels are back to their regular levels. So you, you caught it on day one. Good job. Uh, you did avert a crisis. That could have been really bad. So well done. Uh, you've survived that. Uh, then you check the soil and you notice that there is something weird with the soil and some of the crew are, are seeming to be quite lethargic. Uh, thankfully, you put two and two together because you all are well prepared and uh, you realize that there were some perchlorates in the soil and because of your quick thinking, you actually managed to prevent any potential uh, lingering problems. You're able to treat your crew members who might have had too many perchlorates with some iodine uh, and avoid catastrophe. So well done. And then you check the satellites. Uh, so when you check the satellite, you notice that there's something uh, out in space that you hadn't seen before. Uh, you can't really be sure what it is kind of like out there in the distance. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, you, you just can't really be sure what it is. So you send the, the images out to the ISA and, um, and you know, it's, it's probably, you know, it's probably nothing, like no big deal. So you send them out to the ISA. And with that, you've survived, you've survived round three. So well done. Uh, all right. Now it's time to head to round, or survive to round three. It's time to start round three. So day three, we are starting now. Uh, you guys can start getting your votes in. Decide what you want to see.
Let's see, let's see how you do. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, so now we have pressurization. Uh, pressurization, planetary instruments, and satellites and telescopes. All right, so for pressurization, uh, well, um, <clears throat> so unfortunately, uh, you didn't check pressurization yesterday. So the pressure on day one was looking good, uh, but that means you didn't you didn't check to see if there was anything going on with it yesterday. And unfortunately, uh, it looks like something went wrong because uh, your hub rapidly depressurizes and uh, you kill the base. So, hmm, that's unfortunate. All right, back to day two. Let's try again. <laughs> Rip, you guys, you did a good job though. You 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 did a good job. Don't blame yourself. All right, so day two. What are we checking on day two? What are we feeling? <laughs> so oxygen, soil, pressurization, planetary instruments, or satellites. All right, so we're gonna check the pressure. Seems like that's a universal idea. Uh, all right. It looks like we're checking oxygen, soil, and pressure. Oxygen, soil, pressure. Okay, oxygen, soil, and pressure. Okay, day two. You have checked oxygen. Oxygen levels back to their regular levels. Well done, congratulations. Um, you you managed that day one, no problem. So that's good to go. Uh, you checked the soil. And uh, like we mentioned before, you did notice that there was some something weird going on in the soil. The crew was seeming lethargic. You realized it was perchlorate poisoning. You treat the affected astronauts and you are good to go. Could have been fatal. Now with pressurization, uh, because you checked at day one and now you're checking at day two, you realize that something is off with the pressure reading uh, before it can get catastrophic. Um, it's initially very small, but you realize that there's actually a tiny tear in the hab uh, and you're able to repair it. Had that tiny, tiny, tiny tear uh, been allowed to fester for even just one more day, you would have completely had a catastrophic failure and had to restart. So well done. You've managed to make it to round three. Great job. So let's reset my day three for you guys. Are you, you guys are doing great. You're flying through this. All right. So let's see. Do we want to check A, oxygen, B, soil, C, pressurization, D, planetary instruments, or E, satellites? Seems like planetary instruments and satellites are pulling ahead. Oh, we got oxygen in there too. You guys are really, you guys are really checking that oxygen. All right, so we want D, A, D, and E. All right, A, D, and E are the winners. So we're gonna check oxygen. We're going to check planetary instruments, and we're going to check satellites and telescopes. All right, perfect. So you check oxygen and oxygen is looking good. Oxygen's actually looking great. Levels are back to their normal levels. You are, you're set and you're good to go. Honestly, you've, you've done a great job with your oxygen for sure. Uh, then you check the planetary instruments. Now you did notate on day one uh, that there was a dust storm. That dust storm is now passing over you. Uh, thankfully, because you looked it up, you know you were able to prepare for uh, the dust storm, make sure that everyone was safe. 
as it passes over you, though, you do pick something up on your seismograph. Um, there's some stuff going on in the ground. It looks like something underground and possibly volcanic. So maybe there's a Martian volcano. Uh, so you begin to work on preparing the base and preparing your fellow astronauts to make sure that you guys are are uh, safe and good to go. So could be could have been cat- catastrophic, but it looks like you guys have some time to prepare. Uh, who said Martian? Me. I said Martian. Martian. Um, all right. And then you check the satellites and telescopes. Uh, and um, in this timeline, you, of course, haven't checked the satellites until day three. Uh, so you look up into those uh, satellites and uh, realize that there's something that's heading towards you. You hadn't seen it before. Um, and it's getting, I mean, for something that you haven't seen before, it looks like it's getting pretty close. Um, I don't know. It, uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. It, it's looking a little bit, you don't want to, you don't want to go out on the limb. You're, you'll still send the images along to the ISA, but it does kind of look like an asteroid of some kind. Hmm. Concerning. But you've made it to day four. So, uh, well done. Well done. Uh, all right. So let's start deciding what you, uh, what you want to check on day four. What are we going to check on day four? Lots of options here. Well, the same options. All right, let's see, let's see. Looks like we are checking soil, planetary instruments, and satellites. Soil, planetary instruments, and satellites. Ready to do it? Janudes, that's a great question, actually. Uh, That is a great question. So, uh, all right. So you are checking soil. uh, And you check the soil. Your soil levels look good. Looks great, actually. In fact, well done. You've done it. Uh, You check your planetary instruments. And you actually prepare for a volcano. There, you realize that there is a volcano that is about to erupt on the surface of Mars. Uh, and because you had the forethought to check, you know, so many times you were able to um, to repair the Mars base for a volcano. And you actually go down in human history books as being the first humans to witness a Martian volcano. That's amazing. That is so cool. So well done. Could have been really bad had you not looked. Uh, And then uh, you check your satellites. Um, That thing that you saw, well, the ISA confirms it is, in fact, a meteor. And it is uh, heading on a direct collision course with the the base on Mars. Um, It's too bad you didn't check it sooner because you probably could have, like, had more time to send messages to your family and uh, to share your love with the people on Earth. But... The meteor doesn't hit until day five. So you've actually survived all four days. You've actually won. You win in the long run. I'm not sure. But you did uh, win through the game. It's just that there's really not much that you can do about the asteroid that's heading directly to you. (laughs) So well done. (laughs) You can try running, but I don't know if you'll be able to make it far enough away. So doom and gloom. Listen, it was written by John Elvez and Tatiana. That's that's what they wanted to write for you. <laughs> Sincere sympathies indeed. <laughs> maybe they'll name. Hey, maybe they will name the crater after you. It'll be the ISA crater. That'll be fantastic. How many rovers do we have? I don't think you have enough to get everyone away. You might. But you know what? You know now. You you know on day four. So you have you have a whole time to you know, celebrate with your crewmates, then it's great. That's the best ending I could possibly think of. Fun thought from the game. How many things do you get to check each day when half your astronauts are sick? Oh, that's a good question, Vellum. Uh, I imagine it gets pretty difficult to check everything uh, for the astronauts while they're all sick. So hopefully they'll 
not have uh, quite as many catastrophic failures in the way that uh, that this um, <laughs> this game uh, created. Uh, but hopefully they'll get better soon so that they have a chance to check everything. <laughs> I'm not going to read that <laughs> comment, Bright Eyes. Uh, what is 5 plus 5? Five? 5 plus 5 is 10. Are we still on the I'm an AI computer program thing? <laughs> Good question, though. Good question. <laughs> five plus five is 55. Well, if you just take the plus sign out, then yeah, it could be 55. You just move the two numbers closer together. Good questions. Good questions. Well, y'all, I'm really proud of you. I thought, so when I played this the first time, I died in round one, like, or well, round two. I made the wrong choice round one, and it literally made me die in round two. So I'm very proud that you all were able to do this uh, without dying on round one. You did a great job. Uh, this reminds me of those choose your own adventure books. Oh my gosh, those were, those are, I think my mom has some choose your own adventure books. I loved those growing up. Those are a good time. <laughs> uh, so you know what? It's okay though. Listen, you're going to be, you are the first astronauts to, to see uh, a volcanic eruption on Mars. Uh, and you were able to be the first Martian astronauts to see a meteor. That's great. That's great. <laughs> um, well, with all of that being said, I think that that's going to wrap up our show for the day. Uh, thank you all so much for hanging out and spending time with me as always. I want to say thank you again uh, to those names that I mentioned at the very, very top, but I'm going to say them again. Uh, a super big shout out to S7 Kairos, Brick Bond, CHRNV, John John and Shiny Force. Uh, you all did such an incredible job uh, in the last week helping to um, save Ida and make sure that Ida was, um, was protected. Uh, make sure if you are not uh, regularly checking the ISA comms channel um, to uh, hang out here. I mean, Hopefully we don't have another emergency the way that we had with Ida. But if we do, it's nice to know that you all are here. And uh, I also hang out in the channel so you can come chat with me when you're uh, around. Anywho, I will see you all a little bit later. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>